This program is sponsored by the Church of God International and supported by our viewers. In today's world, there are a lot of different opinions about what sin really is. Variations are as numerous as there are nations, cultures, and religions. For example, some believe that flying airplanes into buildings or bombing places and people or just simply murdering others is perfectly acceptable and pleasing to God while others would call this purely sin. Some believe abortion, homosexuality and same-sex marriages are all acceptable while others, well, they assert this is definitely a sin. Dancing, movie going, rock and roll music, and or for that matter, any kind of music, and of course, drinking and smoking, are all considered by some as sin, while others completely accept them as just part of life. What is sin? And more importantly, how do we expunge sin from our lives once we identify it? These questions challenge the best of us while we struggle to control our passions and appetites. Stay with us as we address these concerns on today's program. In times like these, we need the armor of God for the well-being of our family to help you stand in the evil day. The Church of God International presents Armor of God, a program of biblical understanding. And now your host, Mike James. Hi, welcome to another edition of the Armor of God. We're glad you could join us on today's program. We're going to talk about how to help you get sin out of your life. Now, when you think about sin, what is sin? We saw some of the video just a moment ago, and some people consider those things that we saw on the video sin. Some people actually consider dancing sin. Some people consider having one beer a sin. Now, I believe dancing in a certain way could be sinful. I believe drinking too much alcohol could be sinful, but when we look at other ideas of sin, we come to concepts like drug addiction is sin, or smoking is sin, or burglary, crime is sin, murder is sin. And in most cases, I would agree that those things are sin, but are all sins crime? Are all crimes sin? No, I don't believe that is the case. What is sin? The Bible tells us what sin is. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4, it says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ladies and gentlemen, Jesus came to give us a way out of sin, out of death. Through belief in Jesus Christ, we can overcome our sinful nature and have everlasting life. And there's a, there's a way to do that. He talks about repenting, first of all, realizing that sin is not the way to go and wanting to change your life. Then we, we hear about baptism, getting baptized, having hands laid on you, having God's Holy Spirit come and imbue you with the power of God to overcome sin and go in the right direction in life. And then the Bible talks about prayer, it talks about fasting, it talks about meditation, it talks about obedience to God's law and observing His holy days. All these things can help us fight sin, but I believe there are other ways to fight sin too, and I want to get into some of those other ways to fight sin on today's program. Now before we get into those other ways, I want to offer you some free literature and also a free CD on today's program. The literature that I'd like to offer you on today's program is a booklet that's titled, What is Sin? To some, pleasurable activities such as card playing, dancing, and movie going fall under a category called sin. To others, sin is only 
any behavior society deems unacceptable, but are these descriptions in agreement with the Bible? Again, we've seen what the definition in the Bible is of sin. This booklet will talk about Adam's sin and how it affected the world. It will talk about the sin nature, and it will look at the question, is there an unforgivable sin? Get this booklet to learn more. We also want to offer you a free CD on today's program, and that CD is entitled Antidote to Sin, and it's given by one of the commentators on Armor of God, Mr. Bronson James. So to get both of these items free of charge, all you need to do is call toll-free 1-888-578-8791. Again, that's 1-888-578-8791. 8791, or you can order by visiting our website, www.cgi.org. That's www.cgi.org. We also have a weekly sermon broadcast on the web at www.cgi.org. Welcome back, friends, those of you that were with us at the top of the program, or those of you just tuning in right now. The subject that we're looking at today is how to get sin out of your life. And at the top of the program, we talked about a lot of ways to do that. Prayer, fasting, reading your Bible, fellowshipping with like-minded believers, getting baptized. All those types of things are addressed in the Bible, and they can help you fight the sin nature that we have and get away from it. But I want to address some other methods, some other ways of getting sin out of your life that maybe we haven't thought of in that particular fashion. I want to start things off by telling you that it's important to establish good habits and then become a slave to those good habits. Because look what the Bible says about bad habits, folks. Over in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 9, listen to what we hear there. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So you can overcome bad habits, folks. Folk, people are doing it all the time, and we want to talk about how to do that. One way is you've got to establish good habits in your life and become a slave to those good habits. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Because sometimes it's hard to start those good habits if we haven't had those good habits our entire life. Let's say you were smoking since age 14. That's a very difficult habit to break. But let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. There was a time in my life where my typical lunch was tuna in water. I drained the water, but the tuna was plain. I'd take some carrot sticks, plain carrot sticks, a couple pieces of whole wheat bread, nothing on it, an apple, and some yogurt. That was my typical lunch five days a week. And I did not like that lunch, ladies and gentlemen. It was very bland. But once I did that for a period of time, the apple and the yogurt became to me the most tasty foods I had ever tasted because of establishing that habit and then approaching it in a different way and feeling different about it because I had been doing it for such a long period of time. When we look at establishing good habits, trying to quit smoking or trying to break free from alcoholism, the alcohol, the smoking gives you a good feeling. But let me just tell you, as you start to pull away from it, just like the apple and the yogurt became very tasty to me, the new feeling that you're going to have from breaking free from smoking and alcoholism is going to propel you forward as you try to break the grip of those bad habits. So number one, establish good habits, become a slave to them if you want to rid your life of sin. Another thing we need to keep in mind is our attitude if we want to get sin out of our life. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 4, it says this about love. Charity suffereth long, and again, this charity means love. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. It rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Folks, if you've got an attitude of love in your mind, it's going to help you fight sin. If you don't worry about what people say about you, if you can endure all things, if you can hope for all things, bear all things, other descriptions of what love is, if you rejoice not in iniquity and provoking you is not going to make you quickly jump in and start fighting, that love attitude in your mind can help you fight sin tremendously. You've got to have an attitude adjustment. You've got to put love in the forefront of your mind in your dealings with other people. And when you do that, when you see what love is all about, it will stop you from certain sins if you've got this new attitude that you're going to be thinking about love and how to give that to other people rather than the me nature that is out there within the world today. This can help you in fighting sin in your life. It's if, if it's a sunny day, most people are happy. But if it's a rainy day and you've got love in your heart, you're okay with the rain because you know the rain is going to grow the crops and we need it. That's what I'm talking about, changing that attitude inside of you which will help you stay away from sin. Another thing you got to do when you're fighting sin, ladies and gentlemen, is you've got to be persistent. You can't quit. You got to keep going no matter what. You go and go until you succeed. In Mark chapter 13 and verse 13, is this a biblical concept? Yes, it is, ladies and gentlemen. Mark 13 and verse 13 says the following, And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. To endure to the end, folks, you've got to persist. You've got to be persistent until success is there, and success might be a long time in coming, which I look at as getting into the kingdom of God. There's an old saying that says, if you get knocked down seven times, get up eight times. You've got to have that attitude. When you look at smoking, when you look at alcoholism, when you look at drug abuse, these are tough demons to shake, folks. They are going to work you. You've got to be persistent with them, and you've got to keep working at it to rid yourself of the these types of activities. I like to think of it like this. I visited my, my brother in California a number of years ago, and he decided to drive me up to the Sequoia National Forest. And I remember driving up this hill and seeing how huge these trees were starting to get as we got higher and higher up into the hills. When we got to the top, it was just amazing to see how big those trunks were. And I thought to myself, wow, if I had just a regular axe and was trying to chop down this tree, how long would that take me if I did a little every day? Well, that's how you got to look at sin, folks. You got to keep chopping that axe every day every day and eventually you're going to see you're making a dent you're making a difference you're gonna overcome it if you keep at it folks I like to think of it that way hopefully that will work for you another thing that I'd like to mention here is you've got to live every day as if it's your last day think about that for a minute if you were living every day as if it was your last day when you're upset at somebody, are you going to walk away and not talk to them? Or if it's your last day, don't you want to make amends? Don't you want to get it behind you? Because this is it. Let's do it. Let's take care of it now. Living each day as if it's your last day can really transform your life and how you operate in life. And it will help knock down the amount of sin that may be taking place in your life if you can really get that. I like to tell a story in relation to this. There was a fellow running through the jungle one day looking for strawberries. And as he was going through the jungle, he noticed a tiger behind him. Once he saw that tiger, he took off because he was worried he was going to be lunch for that tiger. 
He ran to a cliff and realized the only way to go was to grab a vine over the cliff. So he hung on to this vine and he was hanging over the cliff waiting for that tiger to leave. He looked below him thinking, maybe I can go all the way down to the bottom. But interestingly enough, there was a tiger at the bottom of the cliff. Now all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a mouse came and started to nibble on that vine. He realized he was in a pickle. But then he noticed it through the vegetation right there on the cliff was a patch of strawberries. And there was a big succulent strawberry right in front of him. So he let all that go from his mind. He pulled that strawberry out and took a bite into it. And it was the best strawberry he had ever tasted. Now the mouse did nibble through the vine. The vine fell, but he fell onto a little outcropping he could not see on the cliff. And he waited there until the tiger above him went away and the tiger below him went away. And he thought about this later and he realized that sometimes in life we're worrying about our past, the tiger above him. And there are people who are worrying about the future, the tiger below him. And there are things that are nibbling at us every day, the vine and the mouse biting through that vine. But right in front of us every day, if we look for it, there are great things like that succulent strawberry that we don't focus on because we've got all this other stuff going on in our head. If you can try to live every day like it's your last, it can help transform your life and move it away from that sinful side. Give it a shot and see what happens. A scripture that pertains to this is over in Luke chapter 12, and I'd like to turn over there just to have you take a look at it or take a note of it. It is a pretty lengthy scripture, so I'm not going to read the entire thing here, but in Luke chapter 12, beginning in verse 22, it says, And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life. Again, live each day like it's your last. What you will eat, neither for the body, what you will put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. And he goes through here and gives examples of what he's talking about. And in the end he says in verse 31, But rather seek the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. So if you're focusing on God's kingdom, all the worries and concerns you have will fall apart and you won't have these necessary worries about the future and the past that sometimes lead to sinful activity. Another very important thing to remember about ridding your life of sin is you've got to be the master of your emotions. You've got to control your feelings. Do not let them master you. Now, what do I mean by that? Look at Matthew 26 and verse 39. Matthew 26 and 39. Jesus is operating in the earth. He's, got his, he's, he's a human being here in, in Matthew 26 and 39, and he says this, And he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Jesus knew what was coming. He was about to be sacrificed. He knew that as a physical human being, that's going to be painful. That's something I may not necessarily want to go through, but he says to his Father in heaven, not my will be done, but yours be done. And as Christians, we need to remember that. It's God's will that matters. We need to let God's will be done rather than our will. And when we allow our emotions to take over, when we allow our feelings to keep us depressed, when we allow our anger to stay for weeks and months and even years, we're not doing any good by trying to rid our lives of sin because definitely your emotions can lead you into sinful activity. Rather than letting your emotions control your actions, let your beliefs and your commitments run your actions. Here's an example of what I mean. Let's say you are having a bad day. Let's say you are happy and someone says, why do you look so downcast? Put a smile on your face, and you may say, well, that, what's that going to do? Believe it or not, if you put a smile on your face, physiological changes start to happen within your body that can help your attitude start to change. If you're depressed, sing a song. Put on some music that you really like. If you are sick, 
why not work a little bit harder? Now, I'm not talking about being deathly sick. I'm talking about the sniffles or a little cold. Try to change how you're starting to feel by your actions, and that can help you come into a whole new attitude about things. If you're uncertain, why not raise your voice or really get yourself involved in whatever the situation may be to lose those attitudes and those mindsets that sometimes take us down the wrong paths in life. You've got to master your emotions. And remember, everyone else is dealing with their emotions and moods also. When someone comes into work and they're in a very bad mood, don't let that get you into a bad mood. Cut them some slack. Realize that there may be something going on in their life that is very serious, that is concerning them, and they just are not themselves. Remember to master your emotions. Don't let them control you. Another point that I'd like to make here in regard to this subject is we've got to laugh at the world, folks. We can't take everything so seriously. Some folks who get very serious about everything, they start to judge everything and everyone. And that can lead us into sinful thoughts, th sinful ideas and activity. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a nice scripture there that touches on this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 4. It says this, There's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. But it definitely says there is a time to laugh. When everything isn't so serious, we aren't going to have the headaches and the constipation and the issues that sometimes come with the headaches of life that cause us internal feelings that really bother us and can lead to sinful activity. Another important point to make in your battle against sin is probably as important as any of the other points, act now. Act now to rid your life of sin. Don't procrastinate. Procrastination is fear, folks. A journey of a thousand miles, getting rid of that addiction, begins with the first step. You've got to take that first step, and you've got to take it now. What are you waiting for? Now is the time to do something, not tomorrow, not next week. We're not guaranteed that time, folks. Now is the time to act. You've got to do it now. There's a scripture I like to turn to on this. It's over in Luke chapter 18, beginning in verse 1. It says this, And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Now, what was she doing here? She was being proactive. She was acting now and continuing to act. And whenever you're battling sin, folks, you got to keep working at it. You've got to establish those good habits that are going to get rid of those bad habits. Act now. Get busy. Go for it. The last point I'd like to make about this is set lofty goals for yourself. Now why? Why set lofty goals? It's hard to achieve lofty goals, right? Look at this. Over in Matthew 28, verse 19, look what Jesus told his disciples to do when he left this earth. Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That's a lofty goal. I'm trying to adhere to that, and let me tell you, it's tough to try to do that. It's going to keep me busy for the rest of my life, and that's good. It's good because my idle hands are not finding the devil's playground, if you get what, what I'm saying there. The fact that you remain busy, that you have goals that you're reaching for, which are positive goals, they are going to help you 
overcome those bad habits and those idle hands that often lead you into doing things that we shouldn't be doing in life. So please set those lofty goals and go out trying to reach them. Now one final scripture I want you to remember here is Matthew 22 and verse 37. It says this there, Matthew 22, 37, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Folks, you've also got to focus on God in order to help you fight through sin. If you aren't focused on God, none of this is going to make a difference for you in trying to overcome the sins that are grabbing you and holding on to you in life. Again, we've looked at a number of other things besides what the Bible already mentions about ridding your life of sin, and those items were starting good habits and becoming a slave to them, having a love attitude within yourself, being persistent, living each day like it's your last, mastering your emotions, acting now and setting lofty goals. And I want you to please get that free literature. Again, the title of that booklet was What is Sin? This is going to help you understand the dilemma of sin in our lives. And I also want you to get the free CD. It's titled Antidote to Sin, and it's by Bronson James, who is one of the moderators or commentators on this program. You've probably seen him before. Each of these items can help you in your battle with sin in this life. To get both of those items free of charge, once again, all you need to do is call toll-free 1-888-578-8791. That's 1-888-578-8791. Or you can visit our website to order, and there's a lot of other information there for you. The website is www.cgi.org. That's www dot cgi dot org. Listen, I know sin is a tough battle. In order to overcome smoking, to overcome alcoholism or drug abuse, it's gonna be a battle. No matter what the sin is though, folks, you can do it through the help of Jesus Christ. This word tells you that, I believe it, and I guarantee you it can happen. Please join us again on another edition of the Armor of God. Bye for now. Armor of God and the free material offered is brought to you by the Church of God International of Tyler, Texas. You may write to us at 3900 Thames Street, Tyler, Texas, 75701, or call toll-free at 1-888-578-8791, or call one 939 during regular business hours. You may visit our website at www.cgi.org or email us at armorofgodcgi.org. We appreciate your prayers and support. This program is sponsored by the Church of God International and supported by our viewers.